What's up everybody? You're watching Model Aviator. My name's Adam. And on the bench we have the brand spanking new E-Flight UMX Timber X 3S powered monster this thing is. Man, what an airplane. So, let's get right to the review. How is it packaged? Well, like all Ultra Micros, really, really, really well. Uh, the box that they come in is a great way to store them, great way to carry them. They don't get hurt in those boxes. The build, there isn't one. This is how you pull it out of the box. It's absolutely ready to go. All you do is take your trusty manual and your transmitter and program it. Now, one thing I will say about the manual, we set our airplanes up per the manual. There is a manual addendum where they actually changed the balance point. They put it a little bit further back and they also point out that you need to make your elevator at neutral needs to be one millimeter down elevator. So we did that before we went flying. Just make sure you follow the instructions. We set up the rates exactly the way the manual said. We've flown ultra micros before. This is our first 3S and the first with this large control surfaces and this much capability, like a lot of gyros, AS3X has Expo built in. So when they say 10% Expo, that may or may not be enough to suit you, but just understand that is in addition to the Expo that's already programmed into the airplane. And we did all kinds of flying with this thing you're going to see us uh, do some sport flying, do some 3D, a little bit of XA, and some bush flying. We took this thing out to the same gravel road, a couple places uh, around our house. And uh, as far as the places around the house, let me give uh, you you men. Uh, this is just for the men, not the ladies, because you're, you're not that stupid. Um, if you get the idea like I did, to let your grass grow really high and then cut a L-shaped runway in it to play with your ultra micro uh, timber. Don't do that. Don't do it. I'm just telling you. Me and my ideas. Anyway, it made for some pretty cool footage that you'll get to see. Uh, Heidi loved it. Anyway, um, so the batteries with this airplane. I love these three cell batteries, not just for the power, but for the fact that they're a quote unquote normal battery, for lack of a better way of putting it. They have a regular JST lead and a balance lead, which means that you can take your trusty cell checker and just plug them right in and check your batteries. I love that. With the 2S stuff, you used to have to take your charge lead with you. You'd plug the charge lead balance lead into your cell checker. Plug your battery into this all the while trying to be super careful and make sure you didn't touch these or hit a metal table or something while you were doing it. Just kind of a pain. So I really, really like not only the power, but the fact that these batteries are just normal. I like it. I like the six minute flight time. Now that was for me. I did let uh, uh, earlier today, I let a 3D pilot out at one of our local fields, young guy, uh, Ryan, and uh, he flew absolutely the crap out of this thing. He was much more aggressive with it than I am. For him, timer's five minutes. For me, it's six. Uh, so, pretty decent flight time. Uh, I kind of like that. And that's pretty much all there is to tell other than you're going to see our setup page before we go to the flying and get back here and sum this thing up. Obviously, we started with what the manual said. We just figured we'd try that and go from there. It has Expo built in. And because of that, they only suggest, even with these extreme throws, they only suggest 10% Expo in each axis. And that's a fine place to start if you're used to an airplane that is very, very sensitive, which I am. If you are not and you're going to fly in the highest rate, I would suggest that you add a good bit more Expo to what's already programmed in that more than 10% and tame that thing down. You might even want to absolutely start in the lower rate. And by the way, in the lower rate, 
we ended up lowering our low rate even more to just do a little bit smoother sport flying. Pretty much all the flying that you're going to see me do was in the high rate, uh, but I was having to really work hard to fly the airplane super smooth. It's really, really aggressive uh, with full on rates, especially without adding more expo, which in some of the footage you'll see we hadn't added that expo yet. I would suggest that if you are a sport pilot that you absolutely program in uh, a much lower rate than the low rate. Maybe instead of 70 or 75 percent, whatever it says, go to maybe 40 percent and start there. Uh, don't put any expo in. There's enough in the gyro. Understand that the expo doesn't change as you change the throw. It is what it is and it's set for the aggressive throw. So when you lower the throw, you're going to have a lot of expo for that amount of throw. You may end up, depending on how low you go on your low rate, actually adding some negative expo so that the airplane doesn't feel mushy depending on how low you go. Just something to keep in mind. But we'll show you our setup page, what we ended up with for both rates. And uh, that might be a good place for you to start, maybe not. Just depends on what your experience level is. So with that, we're going to go to the flying footage and then we'll come back here and we'll sum it up. You're going to see several venues, some bush flying, some 3D flying, some sport flying. Enjoy it. We'll see you right back here. UMX Timber X is pretty stable, an inverted Harrier, right side up Harrier is another story, it's a, a little bit more temperamental there. It does a nice pop top. There's not really enough mass and momentum to get more than one rotation, but it still does it pretty well. Both inverted and right side up flat spins are pretty impressive with the more rearward balance point. Yep, one rotation is pretty much all I've been able to get out of it with a pop top, but that's still fun to do. Now here I'm going into traditional Harrier, and you can see it is not happy there. Uh, you can make the right aileron correction keep it at the right angle of attack and do it just fine, but if you make any mistakes, the wings start rocking away. I got a real kick out of that crankshaft. I have never flown an ultra micro that would do one before. That's pretty impressive.
And here's a conventional flat spin. Really likes that rearward balance. Plane's got nice vertical, and here we're going to demonstrate a power off landing. We're just going to glide the airplane down. With most ultra micros, there's not enough mass, and they tend to kind of fall like a rock, and you have to land them with power. This one's a little different. Here's a bit of gratuitous hovering for you. Here we're just playing around at a local high school parking lot, surrounded by trees and light poles, just to show that you can have fun with this little thing pretty much anywhere. You don't really need a flying field. And it's nice that it comes in under the minimum weight to have to be FAA regulated. That's always nice. Here's another one of those power off landings that we did with it just because we were impressed it would do it. I'm so used to having to land ultra micros with power. It's neat that you don't have to with this one. You gotta do a little bush flying with your bush plane. So, here we go. The UMX Timber X will surprise you at the things that you can take off and land from. It's got those big wheels, but it's still a tiny airplane. But it is very capable as a bush plane. Yep, I did that to my front yard. Did I mention Heidi was thrilled about that? And now we're taking off from some pine straw and landing on it. And another angle. And we're going to come in between a cherry tree and underneath a branch. You can have a lot of fun with this one. And there you have it. What a plane. You saw our setup page. One thing I want to point out, we did the flapperons per the instructions. Worked fine. All that's pre-programmed and pretty easy uh, to activate and get working. You'll notice once you get your manual that we did change our setup on the flapperons just a little bit to make the airplane a little bit easier to fly around slow. I think they're programmed for pretty much power off and we like to have the power on fly it around kind of slow so we had to change the elevator to flapper on mix just a hair uh, but yeah we did make that one change so to sum this thing up i mean it's an amazing airplane you get a great box to store it 
and transport it in to keep it safe. It's built, it's ready to go. Instructions are very good, they're easy to follow. It is worth taking the time to set it up for you uh, and really kind of refine it. Uh, go to the trouble to do that. What skill level is this airplane for? Well, it is not a beginner's airplane uh, at all. I would say that um, a pretty good, confident, intermediate pilot can fly this airplane. If you've flown something else aerobatic, you're definitely going to be able to fly this thing. I would start out in low rates. To be honest, it is a high-level, intermediate, or advanced pilot's airplane, in my opinion, in the highest rate set up with the Expo from the manual. Um, if you're not used to something like that, this tiny thing can get away from you in a hurry. Uh, it's got a drill bit roll rate, a lot of power, a lot of pitch rate, and it, it takes a degree of, of skill and comfort to handle something like that. So just before you mess with this thing in the highest of rates, <clears throat> make sure you're ready for it. Make sure you program your low rate low enough for you to be comfortable with and work your way up to that if you are an intermediate pilot. Um, got a great light package. I'm gonna. I'm convinced I'm gonna crash this thing on the bench. I keep bumping it, but anyway, <laughs> it's a great airplane. We love it. We love the 3S batteries and the fact that they're normal. Uh, what what a deal! I love that Horizon Hobby is making stuff like this. The big big question for me is: Is this my favorite Ultra Micro ever. This is the most impressive Ultra Micro I've ever flown. I told you that. My favorite, <clears throat> until we got this, was the old 2S version of the UMX Pits. I absolutely love this airplane, love scale airplanes like this, and to be honest, it's still my favorite. But it's kind of unfair to the timber because I just like more scale airplanes like this than I do any sport plane. So it's not the timber's fault. It is a more impressive airplane, but I still like this more just because of who I am and what I like. This is going to be a lot of people's favorite Ultra Micro ever for a long, long time. It is great. And the nice thing about these airplanes is given the price point, you can buy a couple of these for which you can buy a Park Flyer EPO plane. For. So that's pretty doggone good. If you like to bush fly, it'll do that. If you like to sport fly, it'll do that. If you're into 3D and XA, it'll do that. So very, very versatile airplane. And if you set up rates for the different styles, it'll be easier for you. Uh, but I think if you are already a 3D pilot, you'll be able to fly it any way you want, even in the highest rate. I didn't really have uh, an issue doing that, but I will say we had to do some takes for me to get some of the less aggressive stuff as well as I wanted to, to execute doing it in the highest rate. It's a sensitive airplane, um, so it is just really, really worth setting it up to do exactly what you want it to do. And then I think regardless of what kind of pilot you are, Sport 3D, Bush Pilot, whatever, you're going to love this thing. We certainly do. We're going to put a link in the description where you can order one of these from Horizon Hobby if you'd like. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We're glad you stopped by. Hope you enjoyed this review. Hope you get something out of it. Take care of yourselves. Happy flying. And hopefully you'll join us next week when we'll have something else cool with wings. Take it easy.